Question 11. What is excesses? Answer. Cross-site scripting. The nightmare of JavaScript. Because JavaScript can run pages locally on the client system as opposed to running everything on the server side, this can cause headaches for a programmer if variables can be changed directly on the client's web page. There are a number of ways to protect against this, the easiest of which is input validation. Question 12. How would you log into Active Directory from a Linux or Macbox? Answer. While it may sound odd, it is possible to access Active Directory from a non-Windows system. Active Directory uses an implementation of the SMB protocol, which can be accessed from a Linux or Mac system by using the Samba program. Depending on the version, this can allow for share access, printing, and even Active Directory membership. Question 13. What are salted hashes? Answer. Salt at its most fundamental level is random data. When a properly protected password system receives a new password, it will create a hashed value for that password, create a new random salt value, and then store that combined value in its database. This helps defend against dictionary attacks and known hash attacks. For example, if a user uses the same password on two different systems, if they use the same hashing algorithm, they could end up with the same hash hash value. However, if even one of the systems uses salt with its hashes, the values will be different. Question 14. What do you think of social networking sites such as Facebook and LinkedIn? Answer. This is a doozy, and there are an enormous number of opinions for this question. Many think they are the worst thing that ever happened to the world, while others praise their existence. In the realm of security, they can be the source of extreme data leaks if handled in their default configurations. It is possible to lock down permissions on social networking sites, but in some cases this isn't enough due to the fact that the backend is not sufficient secured. This also doesn't help if somebody else's profile that you have on your list gets compromised. Keeping important data away from these kinds of sites is a top priority, and only connecting with those your trust is also extremely helpful. Question 15. What are the three ways to authenticate a person? Answer. Something they know, password, something they have token, and something they are, biometric. Two-factor authentication oftentimes uses a password and token setup, although in some cases this can be a pin and thumbprint. Question 16. How would you judge if a remote server is running ease or Apache? Answer. Error messages oftentimes give away what the server is running, and many times if the website administrator has not set up custom error pages for every site, it can give it away as simply as just entering a known bad address. Other times, just using Telnet can be enough to see how it responds. Never underestimate the amount of information that can be gained by not getting the right answer but by asking the right questions. Question 17. What is data protection in transit v's data protection at rest? Answer. When data is protected while it is just sitting there in its database or on its hard drive it can be considered at rest. On the other hand, while it is going from server to client it is in transit. Many servers do one or the other protected SQL databases, VPN connections, etc. However there are not many that do both primarily because of the extra drain on resources. It is still a good practice to do both however, even if it does take a bit longer. Question 18. You see a user logging in as root to perform basic functions. Is this a problem? Answer. A Linux admin account, root, has many powers that are not permitted for standard users. That being said, it is not always necessary to log all the way off and log back in as root in order to do these tasks. For example, if you have ever used the run as admin command in Windows, then you will know the basic concept behind sudo or super user root do for whatever it is you wanted to do. It's a very simple and elegant method for reducing the amount of time you need to be logged in as a privileged user. The more time a user spends with enhanced permissions, the more likely it is that something is going to go wrong, whether accidentally or intentionally. Question 19. What is an easy way to configure a network to allow only a single computer to log in on a particular jack? Answer. Sticky ports are one of the network admin's best friends and worst headache. They allow you to set up your network so that each port on a switch only permits one, or a number that you specify, computer to connect on that port by locking it to a particular MAC address. If any other computer plugs into that port, the port shuts down and you receive a call that they can't connect anymore. If you were the one that originally 
originally ran all the network connections then this isn't a big issue, and likewise if it is a predictable pattern then it also isn't an issue. However if you're working in a hand-me-down network where chaos is the norm then you might end up spending a while toning out exactly what they are connecting to. Question 20. You are remoted into a headless system in a remote area. You have no physical access to the hardware and you need to perform an OS installation. What do you do? Answer. There are a couple of different ways to do this, but the most like scenario you will run into is this. What you would want to do is set up a network-based installer capable of network booting via PXE. If you've ever seen this during your system boot and wondering what it was for, TADA. Environments that have very large numbers of systems more often than not have the capability of pushing out images via the network. This reduces the amount of hands-on time that is required on each system, and keeps the installs more consistent.